Vampirism represents something different to everyone. So immortality and extreme power. And for some people, it's this alluring sex appeal. Everyone has heard of vampires and werewolves. Every single decade has a new vampire or werewolf film to be crazy about. The legends kind of changed a lot over time. At the time, medical science was developing and people were becoming aware of things like coma. So someone might appear dead, but we're not actually. Doctors were managing to revive people who people thought were dead, and there was a great fear of being buried alive. So that all fed into the vampire legend, this kind of being which is dead but not dead. I think things like vampires and ghosts and all the monsters that you hear in folklore, they're subject to their time period and they reflect fears of the time, whereas now we have people being worried about, you know, 4G towers and it shifts with the time period, I think. All right, Jimmy. No bad, Colin. Well, Jimmy, Jimmy was actually there on the event, so Jimmy would be better for that perspective of it, eh, Jimmy? Yeah, yeah. I mean, you're going back to 1954, so it's quite a long time ago. I was only 10, but there were kids younger than me, all shapes and sizes. There were 90,000 people stayed in the goggles. It was as big as Falkirk. It's completely changed from what it was back in the 50s. I mean, back then it was all tenements, and then behind uh, the Southern Acropolis was Dixon's Blazes Ironworks. That used to light the sky up red at night. But on the day in question, it was a cry went up on the street. There was a vampire in uh, the Southern Acropolis. And as I say, the people were playing football, we all just stopped and were headed for the, for the cemetery. In September 1954, in Gorbals, Glasgow, rumours had spread among the school children of a terrible seven-foot-tall vampire with iron teeth. Rumour had it that this vampire had kidnapped and murdered two young boys and feasted on their corpses. Despite the adults in the place trying to calm the hysteria, the children decided that action had to be taken to bring this terrible Gorbals vampire to justice. What happened next was truly remarkable. After school, hundreds of children of all ages armed themselves with blades and crosses, stakes and dogs, and descended upon the city's southern necropolis to hunt the Gorbals vampire. The children prowled the graveyard as night fell, checking behind trees and headstones for the awful creature that might be lurking. A thick fog rolled in, and in it, many shadowy figures were caught by firelight. The children would rush to this silhouette, and then another, as they thought they saw the vampire lurking in the mist. Their hunt continued until the rain started. The children went home, only to come right back the next night, and the night after that. By the third night, interest from the children was beginning to fade, but the fear of the Gorbals vampire had already set itself in the heart of the community, as the press picked up the story. Hysteria spread throughout Gorbals, and soon among the wider population, until a discussion arose surrounding the impacts of American horror comics on young people. A lot of vampire folklore dealt with proper burial of the dead. It was very important of how you buried your dead, because you didn't want them to come back and you didn't want their bodies snatched. You know, originally the vampires in Romania didn't bite your neck and suck your blood. They would escape from a tiny little hole in the grave after somebody was buried and suck the soul out of people. I think people have to be in the right mindset to even entertain the thought that there would be a vampire. When you throw a vampire into it, you get a frenzy. Well, if there is one, I'm gonna go hunt it. And if there isn't one, I've had really a hell of a good time doing it. Was I scared? Probably no. But I never ever told my mother, in case she would give me a slap in the back of the head. <laughs> you must scared of your mum. <laughs> <laughs> As Jimmy will tell you, there's a 90,000 population in the Gorbals at that time. So there's a big, big, heavy population. And the news would have just travelled like wild, faster than Facebook, the news would have just travelled like wildfire. Back then, I think he had killed two kids or eight two kids. There's actually no evidence whatsoever that any children got murdered or disappeared around that time. Solidly, for the last like 70, 80 years, vampires have always been part of pop culture. So it's never going to be that difficult for people to kind of believe in vampires or make stories about vampires, especially if there are a few little details like that, like a creepy glowing red light, missing children. The idea of the vampire is already so popular, even in like the 50s, 60s, 70s. It doesn't seem like a big leap 
that people would kind of join the dots there and think of Hammer Horror and Universal and think of American comic books and whatever else they're consuming and think, oh, vampire. You know, the hysteria was kind of ramped up so much. It's kind of folklore um, at its most intense level. Folklore is defined as something which is passed on and it's changed and it kind of grows arms and legs. But here you've got a group of children. There's supposed to be about 150 kids, all told, maybe more. And you wouldn't really, you know, be surprised that children had kind of blown this out of perspective, but the fact that so many children got involved. Or hinting about the necropolis for this uh, elusive vampire. And kind of believed that this rumour was true, I think is just really fascinating. In fact, that it eventually went to Parliament. Even an act was passed which changed uh, the law because of this incident in this Glasgow necropolis. In 1955, the, the government passed the Children and ha Young Persons Harmful Publications Act, and that was to deter younger children from buying comic books. So, and that law still stands to this day, yeah, so yeah. it made a big impact. I mean, reading horror comics never affected me. I didn't expect to go and find a monster <laughs> or, or something in the street. It was just, just a comic, you know. But yeah, and saying that, you could still buy the comics. People used to do like second hand comics and bookshops and stuff like that. So you could still find the comics if you were looking for them. But I think maybe Stephen King said it best. We all crave horror for some reason. And it's because within us is a darkness and it feeds us a little bit. Just the mind, the mentality about vampires and the allure that they kept for hundreds of years. I mean, they've never really gone out of favor. They seem to be archetypal things that have kind of transcended regional folklore now. They're no longer these regional folkloric tales. Everyone around the world seems to know about them. We're all using our phone and our laptops and our computers much more than we probably usually would anyway. We were using them very often before the pandemic, but now there's nothing else to do. So it's prime time for people to get obsessed with some sort of folkloric creature or urban legend or what have you. I've always held true to the belief that human beings just will never change that much. You look at the graffiti on the walls of Pompeii and there's the same jokes that people make today. People will not change that much. When we colonize Mars, we'll still be doing the same stuff as we are today. <laughs> I think it's a great example as well, but when you think back to then, it just shows you how, how close a community the Gobbles in Glasgow and a lot of other cities were. Because of social media and the internet, the story is really growing and growing and growing. It's great for the cemetery because it, it keeps the legacy, the history alive, if you like. It's just that, that's not an, an urban myth that you've yeah. just got to keep going. It's a social thing, so you've got to keep it. Go to tell the, the story because if you don't tell the story, you lose it, you know, and it, it makes everything a bit more colourful. Gallivan, it's time to hear a legend story full of fear. Glasgow's gorbals, lots of wains, some with sticks and some with stains. Ready, able, brave, and strong, all together run along to try and see and catch this guy. Perhaps he'll run maybe fly. The story started from one mouth, then like wildfire went all south. A man so tall with teeth like steel. Do we believe? Could he be real? No time to waste, we must act fast. These poor took wings must be the last. It's said they came 150 strong. On Gorbo streets they ran along. Running faster, gather speed, footsteps. The gatehouse arch, the mob did meet. What phantom creature must they defeat? Homemade weapons to defend, but all too soon comes to an end. The next day paper's headlines read, Vampire with iron teeth is dead. Godbo's vampire. Thank you. <laughs>